Hey everyone, it's Alex, and I am here with my video for the 71st Emmy Awards nominations. I would have come out with this video sooner, but I had things going on in my life, plus I had to get my Saturn Awards video uh, filmed and edited and uploaded before I could get to this. Now normally I would have made a previous video before this about who was going to host the Emmy Awards, but this year the Emmys are deciding to follow in the Oscars' footsteps and have no hosts at all. Uh, this will be the first time, I believe, since 2003 that the Emmy ceremony has not had a host. While the Emmy producers did admit they were partially inspired by the success of the Oscars without a host, they also said one of the reasons why they were going without a host is because they want to pay tribute to a lot of the shows that ended earlier this year, like Game of Thrones, Veep, and The Big Bang Theory, and so on because there has been quite a lot of shows that have ended this year. And if you've seen my videos on the Emmys in the past, you will know that the Emmy Awards are actually split into two ceremonies. There's the Creative Arts Ceremony, which honors all the technical categories, as well as things like guest acting and reality host. And then there's the Main Telecast, which honors all the primary acting, writing, and directing categories. Uh, I only go over most of those categories because the Emmys literally have over a hundred categories, so I only focus on the really big ones, you know, because otherwise this video would be six hours long. Uh, and if you've never seen any of my Emmy videos before, the way the Emmys work is that, you know, they're split up into comedy series nominations, drama series nominations, variety, limited series, and so on and the actors are all nominated for their shows, and writers and directors are often nominated for individual episodes when it comes to comedy and drama series. And variety series, they usually nominate the writing teams, but nominate directors for specific episodes. And for limited series and TV movies, well, TV movies, you're obviously nominated for the whole thing because it's a movie, but if for a limited series, when it comes to writing and directing, sometimes you're nominated for the whole thing, or sometimes one particular episode. It depends on what they chose to submit in the pre-nomination process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the nominations without commenting on them, and then I'm going to talk about what I like, what I don't like, and what I think got snubbed. Now, admittedly, I have not seen every show that has been nominated here at the Emmys, so there's not going to be as much for me to talk about like I would if I were making my video about the Oscar nominations because admittedly I'm more focused on movies than TV, but I will give my thoughts on what I have seen and just the general consensus from what critics and awards predictors have been saying about nominations and snubs and all that. So without further ado, here are the nominations for the 71st Emmy Awards. And we'll start off with the comedy categories. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series Alan Arkin, The Kaminsky Method Anthony Kerrigan, Barry Tony Hale, Veep Stephen Root, Barry Tony Shalhoub, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Henry Winkler, Barry Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series Alex Borstein, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel Anna Klumsky, Veep Sean Clifford, Fleabag, Olivia Coleman, Fleabag, Betty Gilpin, Glow, Sarah Goldberg, Barry, Marin Henkel, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Kate McKinnon, Saturday Night Live, Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series, Anthony Anderson, Blackish, Don Cheadle, Black Monday, Ted Danson, The Good Place, Michael Douglas, the Kaminsky Method, Bill Hader, Barry, Eugene Levy, Schitt's Creek. And just so you know, Schitt's Creek is not spelled the way you think it might be. If you've never heard of the show, it's actually spelled S-C-H-I-T-T -T, and not the other word, just for clarification, because normally I don't say curse words on my videos, but I just wanted to make the clarification here. And, well, technically I did not say a curse word in this case because, you know, it's spelled differently and that's the name of the show. So, anyway, 
Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series, Christina Applegate, Dead to Me, Rachel Brosnahan, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Veep, Natasha Lyonne, Russian Doll, Catherine O'Hara, Schitt's Creek, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Fleabag. Outstanding Guest Actor in a Comedy Series, Matt Damon, Saturday Night Live, Robert De Niro, Saturday Night Live, Luke Kirby, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Peter McNichol, Veep, John Mulaney, Saturday Night Live, Adam Sandler, Saturday Night Live, Rufus Sewell, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series, Jane Lynch, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Sandra O, oh, Saturday Night Live, Maya Rudolph, The Good Place, Fiona Shaw, Fleabag, Kristen Scott Thomas, Fleabag, Emma Thompson, Saturday Night Live. Outstanding writing for a comedy series, Alec Berg and Bill Hader, Barry, Ronnie Slash Lily, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Fleabag, Episode 1, Josh Siegel and Dylan Morgan, The Good Place, Janet's. Maya Erskine and Anna Conkle. Pen 15, Anna Ishii Peters. Leslie Headland, Natasha Leone, and Amy Poehler. Russian Doll, Nothing in This World is Easy. Allison Silverman, Russian Doll, A Warm Body. David Mandel, Veep, Veep. And no, I did not make a mistake there. Veep literally named its series finale the same as the TV show which is what that specific episode is. Outstanding Directing for a Comedy Series Alec Berg, Barry, The Audition Bill Hader, Barry, Ronnie Slash Lily Mark Sandrowski, The Big Bang Theory, The Stockholm Syndrome Harry Bradbeer, Fleabag, Episode 1 Amy Sherman Palladino, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, All Alone Daniel Palladino the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel were going to the Catskills. Outstanding Comedy Series Barry, Fleabag, The Good Place, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Russian Doll, Schitt's Creek, Veep. And now onto the variety categories. Outstanding Writing for a Variety Series John Mullaney and Seth Meyers, Documentary Now. Melinda Taub, Samantha B, Miles Kahn, Kristen Bartlett, Mike Drucker, Pat Cassells, Eric Drysdale, Nathan Earhart, Nicole Silverberg, Ashley Nicole Black, Joe Grossman, and Allison Silverman. Full Frontal with Samantha B. Dan Gerwich, Jeff Moore, Jill Twist, Julie Weiner, Tim Carvel, Raquel DePeace, Josh Gondelman, Daniel O'Brien, John Oliver, Owen Parsons, Charlie Red, Joanna Rothkopf, Ben Silva, and Cena Valley. Last week tonight with John Oliver. Jermaine Afonso, Alex Bays, Karen Chi, Brian Donaldson, Sal Gentile, Matt Goldich, Dina Gusovsky, Jennifer Hagel, Allison Horde, Michael Carnell, John Lutz, Seth Myers, Ian Morgan, Seth Rice, Amber Ruffin, Mike Scollins, Mike Shoemaker, and Ben Warheit. Late Night with Seth Myers. Opus Moreshi, Jay Katzer, Aaron Cohen, Stephen Colbert, Tom Purcell, Barry Julian, Paul Danello, Matt Lappin, Michael Brum, Emmy Blotnick, Cullen Crawford, Ariel Dumas, Glenn Eichler, Django Gold, Gabe Gronley, Greg Owinski, Daniel Kibblesmith, Kate Sidley, Jen Spira, Brian Stack, John Thibodeau, Michael Pilachik, Asher Perlman, and Eliana Quartler. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Michael Che, Colin Yost, Kent Sublette, Brian Tucker, James Anderson, Stephen Castillo, Andrew Dismukes, Anna Drazen, Allison Gates, Steve Higgins, Sam Jay, Eric Kenward, Michael Komen, Alan Linick, Eli Coyote Mandel, Lorne Michaels, John Mullaney, Josh Patton, Simon Rich, Gary Richardson, Pete Schultz, Merica Sawyer, Will Steven, Julio Torres, Bowen Yang, Megan Callahan, Dennis McNicholas, Katie Rich, Fran Gillespie, 
Sudi Green, and Streeter Seidel, Saturday Night Live. Outstanding Directing for a Variety Series. Alex Buono and Reese Thomas, Documentary Now, Waiting for the Artist. Derek Waters, Drunk History, Are You Afraid of the Drunk? Paul Penolino, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Psychics. Jim Hoskinson, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Live Midterm Election Show. Don Roy King, Saturday Night Live, Host Adam Sandler. Sasha Baron Cohen, Nathan Fielder, Daniel Gray Longino, and Dan Mazur. Who is America? Episode 102. Outstanding Variety Sketch Series. At Home with Amy Sedaris. Documentary Now. Drunk History. I Love You America with Sarah Silverman. Saturday Night Live. Who is America? Outstanding Variety Talk Series. The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Full Frontal with Samantha B, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Late Late Show with James Corden, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And now onto the two reality competition categories. Outstanding host for a reality or reality competition program, RuPaul Charles, RuPaul's Drag Race. James Corden, The World's Best, Ellen DeGeneres, Ellen's Game of Games, Marie Kondo, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, Making It, Outstanding Competition Program, The Amazing Race, American Ninja Warrior, Nailed It, RuPaul's Drag Race, Top Chef, The Voice. And now, on to the limited series or movie nominations. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Limited Series or Movie. Asante Black, When They See Us. Paul Dano, Escape at Danamora. John Leguizamo, When They See Us. Stellan Skarsgård, Chernobyl. Ben Wyshaw, A Very English Scandal. Michael Kenneth Williams, When They See Us. Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or Movie Patricia Arquette, The Act Marsha Stephanie Blake, When They See Us Patricia Clarkson, Sharp Objects Vera Farmiga, When They See Us Margaret Qualley, Fosse Verdon Emily Watson, Chernobyl Outstanding Lead Actor in a Limited Series or Movie Mahershala Ali True Detective, Benicio Del Toro, Escape at Danamora, Hugh Grant, A Very English Scandal, Jared Harris, Chernobyl, Jarrell Jerome, When They See Us, Sam Rockwell, Fosse Verdon. Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series or Movie, Amy Adams, Sharp Objects, Patricia Arquette, Escape at Danamora, Anjanu Ellis, when They See Us, Joey King, The Act, Niecy Nash, When They See Us, Michelle Williams, Fosse Verdon. Outstanding Writing for a Limited Series or Movie, Craig Mazin, Chernobyl, Brett Johnson, Michael Tolkien, and Jerry Stahl, Escape at Danamora, Episode 6, Brett Johnson and Michael Tolkien, Escape at Danamora, Episode 7. Stephen Levinson and Joel Fields, Fosse Verdon, Providence, Russell T. Davies, A Very English Scandal, Ava DuVernay and Michael Starberry, When They See Us, Part 4. Outstanding Directing for a Limited Series or Movie, Johan Rank, Chernobyl, Ben Stiller, Escape at Danamora, Jessica Yu, Fosse Verdon, Glory. Thomas Kale, Fosse Verdon, Who's Got the Pain? Stephen Frears, A Very English Scandal. Ava DuVernay, When They See Us. Outstanding Limited Series. Chernobyl, Escape at Danamora. Fosse Verdon, Sharp Objects, When They See Us. Outstanding Television Movie. 
Black Mirror Bandersnatch, Brexit, Deadwood the Movie, King Lear, My Dinner with Hair Bay. And now, finally, onto the drama categories. Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, Alfie Allen, Game of Thrones, Jonathan Banks, Better Call Saul, Nikolai Coaster Waldo, Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, Giancarlo Esposito, Better Call Saul, Michael Kelly, House of Cards, Chris Sullivan, This Is Us, Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, Gwendolyn Christie, Game of Thrones, Julia Garner, Ozark, Lena Headey, Game of Thrones, Fiona Shaw, Killing Eve, Sophie Turner, Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams, Game of Thrones. Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series, Jason Bateman, Ozark, Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us, Kit Harrington, Game of Thrones, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Billy Porter, Pose, Milo Ventimiglia, This Is Us. Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series, Amelia Clark, Game of Thrones, Jodie Comer, Killing Eve, Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder, Laura Linney, Ozark, Mandy Moore, This Is Us, Sandra O, oh, Killing Eve, Robin Wright, House of Cards. Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series, Michael Angarano, This Is Us, Ron Cephas Jones, This Is Us, Michael McKeon, Better Call Saul, Kumail Nanjiani, The Twilight Zone, Glenn Turman, How to Get Away with Murder, Bradley Whitford, The Handmaid's Tale. Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama Series, Laverne Cox, Orange is the New Black, Cherry Jones, The Handmaid's Tale, Jessica Lang, American Horror Story Apocalypse, Felicia Rashad, This Is Us, Cicely Tyson, How to Get Away with Murder, Carice Van Houten, Game of Thrones. Outstanding Writing for a Drama Series, Peter Gould and Thomas Schnauz, Better Call Saul, Winner, Jed Mercurio, Bodyguard, Episode 1, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, Game of Thrones, The Iron Throne, Bruce Miller and Kira Snyder, The Handmaid's Tale, Holly, Emerald Fennel, Killing Eve, Nice and Neat, Jesse Armstrong, Succession, Nobody is Ever Missing, Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, Game of Thrones, The Iron Throne, David Nutter, Game of Thrones, The Last of the Starks, Miguel Sapochnik, Game of Thrones, The Long Night, Dana Reed, The Handmaid's Tale, Holly, Lisa Bruhlman, Killing Eve, Desperate Times, Jason Bateman, Ozark, Reparations, Adam McKay, Succession, Celebration. And finally, Outstanding Drama Series, Better Call Saul, Bodyguard, Game of Thrones, Killing Eve, Ozark, Pose, Succession, This Is Us. And those are the major nominations for the 71st Emmy Awards. Now I'll just kind of go over what I like about the ones I've seen and just buzz that I've heard. So for comedy series, uh, we have the return of a show that took last year off, you could say. Uh, Veep did not compete at the Emmys last year because they delayed production on their final season so that Julia Louis-Dreyfus could undergo treatment for breast cancer. And, of course, she is now thankfully in remission and is all better. And now they're, the show is competing for the final time, since it is one of the many shows that wrapped up this year. Not as many nominations as it's had for its past seasons, so whether or not that will prevent it from winning a lot of awards, we'll have to see. But uh, a lot of shows from last year increased their nomination hall significantly. Uh, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel it had like 
14 nominations last year. I don't have the exact numbers, and this year it has 20. So when a show can grow in nominations, that's obviously a good sign. Same with Barry. That show jumped tremendously. It has like 17 nominations, especially a lot more nominations for the actors. And I really like Bill Hader. I think he's a great actor, and from what I've seen of Barry, you know, it's, it's very darkly funny, and Bill Hader is good at doing that. Of course, you got some new shows in here, like Russian Doll, uh, which premiered earlier this year, and uh, Schitt's Creek. That was a show I never thought would make it into the Emmys, because it's in its like fifth season now, I think. I've never watched the show. It's never really gotten any major Emmy nominations until now. Um, I know it's been a, a lot of people have bemoaned it getting snubbed in the past. Well, it's here now, so I guess they don't have to complain anymore. Uh, and then Fleabag, talk about a show that kind of came out of nowhere. Well, n not quite, but it's only had two seasons because it was never meant to be a long-running show. And it, the second season is its final season. It got no Emmy nominations at all for its first season and then got like 11, I think, for its second season. So talk about a significant increase. Now, I've never watched Fleabag, but I've seen so many people like, right on the internet, Fleabag, one of the greatest shows ever! They worship it almost religiously, it seems. I mean, but I've seen some of the actors in it, like uh, Olivia Colman, of course, who, you know, surprisingly won Best Actress at the Oscars earlier this year for The Favorite. Uh, many have thought Glenn Close would finally win on her seventh nomination for her film The Wife, but nope. And uh, talk about quite a surprising moment. I personally wanted Lady Gaga to win for A Star Is Born, but I already talked about that in my Oscar video. And then Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I haven't really seen her in too much, although I did see her, in, well, heard her, I guess, in Solo, A Star Wars Story, where she voiced uh, an android who was like Lando Calrissian's co-pilot. So there's quite a lot of familiar faces nominated here uh, from, you know, past shows and a lot of new faces, like with Barry, you've got newcomers newcomer nominees like Anthony Kerrigan, Stephen Root, Sarah Goldberg, and with Marvelous Mrs. Maisel you got Tony Shalhoub, Marin Hinkle, and uh, as I mentioned before, the Schitt's Creek actors, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara. Uh, and while Anthony Anderson still made it in for Blackish, uh, poor Tracy Ellis Ross got left out, but I guess Blackish has kind of been starting to lose momentum in, in all the various award shows which often happens with network TV shows, sadly. I mean, look at The Big Bang Theory. It managed to get a, dire a directing nomination for its finale, mainly because the comedy directing category requires at least one of the nominees be a multi-camera sitcom, but no love for any of the actors like Jim Parsons, who hasn't been nominated since 2014, after he won his fourth Emmy for playing Sheldon Cooper. I guess maybe they felt four was enough. And then you have The Kaminsky Method, which... Many people thought underperformed because everyone expected it to get like a comedy series nomination and it didn't. And I'm sure some people thought it would get like writing and directing nominations, but it didn't. Of course, it got nominations for its stars Michael Douglas and Alan Arkin. Whether they actually win, we'll have to see because even though movie stars who go to TV do get nominated, they often always don't win because I think Emmy voters like to see actual TV stars win, if you will. I mean, Many thought Matthew McConaughey would win Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series for True Detective, and but it ended up going to Brian Cranston for the final season of Breaking Bad. And then in the guest acting categories, um, from some of these I've seen, they're not. Some of them really aren't that big of a surprise. Like John Mulaney, his turn on Saturday Night Live was one of the most acclaimed. Same with Adam Sandler. He of course did that tribute to his old friend and former SNL castmate Chris Farley. Uh, of course, Matt Damon and Robert De Niro were well known for their turns on Saturday Night Live as Brett Kavanaugh and Robert Mueller. Uh, and then Peter McNichol got kind of a nice comeback, I guess you could say, for Veep because when he was nominated in this category for Veep in 2016, his nomination was then later revoked because it turned out he appeared in too many episodes to qualify because guest actors and actresses, according to recent rules, can now only appear in 50% or less of a show's season. 
In the past, they could get away with being practically a cast member and still be nominated as a guest actor or actress, but not anymore. <laughs> but at least now Peter McNichol didn't break the rules this time, so his nomination is safe. I heard his submission, though, was literally only like 48 seconds, which personally to me, I think you should have somewhat of a minimum time length to qualify for a nomination, but I guess you don't need one, but I would think you'd need at least two minutes or so. But I haven't really seen too much of Veep, so I can't say. Most of these shows, like I said before, I can't really say anything about them because my focus is more on movies. Um, but then for the variety series categories, I mean, really no surprise there at all. Um, but of course we do have a couple of newcomers, well, one real newcomer with Who is America, that Sasha Baron Cohen show. Kind of similar to what he did with like Borat, where he kind of went around in disguises and tricked people into thinking he was like a real journalist, and he got all these Republican politicians to say and do these crazy things that, you know, were extremely shocking to say the least. Although, admittedly, one of the directors nominated for Outstanding Directing for a Variety Series, Dan Mazur, he directed what I personally think is the worst film I've ever seen in my life, Dirty Grandpa. And if you've seen my Worst Films of 2016 video, oh boy, I go on an epic rant about Dirty Grandpa in that video, because, uh, I mean, uh, maybe he just got lost in the shuffle, I don't know. Maybe he did a better job here, but I haven't seen Who is Ameri this Who is America episode, so I can't say. Um, And then for Outstanding Host for a Reality or Reality Competition Program, uh, you got some familiar faces, of course, like RuPaul Charles, Ellen DeGeneres, but you got three new faces this year. Uh, James Corden, I didn't expect him to get in for the world's best. I honestly didn't even know that show existed, to be honest. Um, I've heard of Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, and I know that show's gotten a lot of buzz. Despite the buzz, there was... Not a lot of people were sure if she would be nominated or not because, you know, this show is not really a competition show and they usually nominate hosts from those types of shows, but she made it in. And then making it, you know, I love Amy Poehler. This show, of course, kind of deals with Nick Offerman's other hobby besides acting, which is woodworking. He's an expert woodworker. And then Outstanding Competition Program, you know, got all the, a lot of the major contenders we've always had in the past, but then... We have Nailed It, which I have never seen before. I've kind of heard of it, but I've never seen it before. So I'm kind of surprised it got in. I wonder if it'll stay in for the next year and the year after, but we'll have to see. All right, now that limited series TV movies, I can really talk about a lot of these. Um, the ones I've seen, they're all really good. Escape at Danamora, that was really good. You know, when I heard Ben Stiller was going to direct it, I was like, interesting really because most of the time when Ben Stiller does step behind the camera to direct he it's almost always a comedy and it doesn't always turn out well like for instance Zoolander I know a lot of people love Zoolander but I'm not a fan of that movie at all especially with the way it was directed but here wow the difference was night and day I mean I would never have guessed Ben Stiller directed this if I didn't know he was directing this of course, it mentions in the credits of each episode that he directed it because he directed the whole limited series, but yeah. I mean, wow, his direction of Escape of Danamore is fantastic. And so are all the performances, Benicio Del Toro, Paul Dano, and especially Patricia Arquette. I mean, wow, what a transformation. And um, this is based on a true story of two prisoners who actually did like a Shawshank Redemption-style prison escape from the... Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York, which is a couple hours away from my, where I live. So, and I remember that story happening on the news, and it was like, oh my god, because, you know, you would think this kind of stuff only happened in a movie, but no, this happened in real life. I've sadly not had a chance to see Chernobyl yet, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. It just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, well, not quite. I mean, I, I did know that this that it was in production, but nobody really expected it to become quite the critical darling it was. I mean, it had the potential to be a critical darling, but 
as big of a critical darling as it was. I think it took everyone by surprise to a certain extent, especially because the writer behind it, Craig Mazin, is more known for raunchy comedies. So to go from that to pure drama, that's quite the change. Um, and it's like the highest rated show on IMDb ever. So that's quite a thing. It just became kind of one of those water cooler discussion type of shows. And of course, it's based on the horrific true incident of the nuclear accident at the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine in 1986 in which a nuclear reactor exploded and spewed tons of radiation into the atmosphere and all the citizens of Pripyat, the city where the Chernobyl plant was located, they all had to evacuate and many of them who were exposed to the radiation suffered from all sorts of radiation type sicknesses and the place today is still extremely radioactive. You have to take a lot of precaution if you actually want to go to Pripyat, and it's going to be way too dangerous to live for a really, really long time, probably hundreds of years. If you see the drone footage of that city, it's just, it's, it's a giant ghost town because you see all the apartment buildings and schools and hotels and everything just left there in still standing, but starting to decay from having no maintenance on them for over 30 years. Sharp Objects was really good, maybe a little bit too slow paced at times, but the performances in that were really fantastic. Amy Adams was absolutely magnificent uh, as Camille Preaker, a journalist who tries to solve these murders but then has to deal with her own abusive mother, and that's all I can really say without giving away major spoilers, because it's one of those shows where you should kind of go in knowing only a little bit about the plot to see how it all unravels. But Patricia Clarkson, she's excellent as Amy Adams' mother. And then Eliza Scanlon, who plays her half-sister, she was fantastic. She's a young actress, and this is kind of like her breakthrough role. Uh, Bossy Verdon, I thought was really good. Maybe not as great as it could have been, because it tells the story of Bob Fosse and Gwen Verdon, who were uh, big Broadway stars. He was a director and choreographer. She was an actress. And they and it d details their personal and professional relationship because they were married and they worked on a lot of projects together. And it deals with the highs and lows of show business and their relationship and all the drama that went along with it. And it's not told in like a complete chronological order. It's kind of told out of sequence with a lot of flashbacks and things like that, which I felt was a little bit of a detriment. I wish it was a little more focused and streamlined, because then it would have helped make some things more clear. But other than that, everything about it was great. Sam Rockwell was fantastic. I mean, he literally was Bob Fosse, with not just the look, you know, with Bob Fosse's famous comb-over and things like that, but the attitude and the, everything Bob Fosse went through, like, with the womanizing and the excessive drug use and smoking and, you know, because Bob Fosse, he was the kind of guy who liked to live hard, maybe a little too hard. And Michelle Williams, she was easily the best thing about this miniseries. It felt like she literally was Gwen Verdon. You know, I didn't see Michelle Williams at all. And my God, what an amazing transformation. And a lot of the supporting cast was great, too, like uh, Norbert Leo Butts. Shame on the Emmys for not nominating him for supporting actor in a limited series or movie, because he was fantastic as uh, writer-director Patty Chayefsky. Uh, Margaret Qualley, who played uh, dancer, actress, and choreographer Anne Reinking, who was Bob Fosse's girlfriend for many years, because he and Gwen Verdon would separate, but they would never actually divorce, and during that time, they both took on other romantic partners. Uh, but yeah, Margaret Qualley was really good. And for those that don't know, Margaret Qualley actually happens to be the daughter of actress Andy McDowell. Fun fact there. Yeah, but fantastic production design, beautiful cinematography. If you love show business and you love Broadway, you really got to check out Fosse Verdon. And actually, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who of course you may know from uh, Hamilton, he actually served as an executive producer on Fosse Burden. And When They See Us, oh man, talk about a very powerful 
gut punch of a miniseries. This, of course, detailed the story of the Central Park Five, in which five teenagers, four black and one Latino, were falsely accused and convicted of raping a white woman in Central Park in 1989. And the police made them give false confessions, there was, and they, those false confessions were used to convict them of that rape, and they spent years in prison, and it took a long time for their convictions to be overturned. It's a really, really sad and infuriating story. And thankfully now the five men, Corey Wise, Kevin Richardson, Yusuf Salam, Antron McRae, and Raymond Santana Jr., they're all now, their convictions were eventually overturned, and they're now, they've gone forward with their story many times to raise awareness about what happened to them, and I believe they're all going to be attending the Emmys as guests of honor with the series director Ava DuVernay, so good for them. And out of the Central Park Five, you got two of them nominated. You got Jarrell Jerome nominated for lead actor in a limited series or movie for playing Corey Weiss, and he's the only one of them to play his character both as a teen and as an adult. But then you have Asante Black nominated for playing Kevin Richardson as a teen. He's only 17 years old. I believe it was his debut performance, but wow. I mean, watching the episode that he's featured in, you can see why he got that Emmy nomination because the, the one scene where his, Kevin is being interrogated by police and being forced to give a false confession, it, it, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And for an actor that young to convey that kind of heartbreak, that's not an easy thing to do and most young actors probably aren't able to display that kind of raw emotion. But he was just fantastic. And he actually happens to be the nephew of an Emmy-winning actress. His aunt is uh, Samira Wiley, who last year won the Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama Series for The Handmaid's Tale. And then all the other people that were nominated for When They See Us, like Marsha Stephanie Blake, Vera Farmiga, Anjanou Ellis, Nisi Nash, they were all excellent, very well-deserving. Although I do feel kind of with Anjanou Ellis and Nisi Nash, to me, they honestly felt more like supporting actresses rather than lead, but I guess they didn't want to have to cram all the cast into supporting. That way, I guess it would allow a little more variety from other series in these categories as well. But either anyway, they're all deserving of their nominations, to say the least. Uh, and then interestingly with... Um, Outstanding Television Movie, none of the nominees in, the, in that category have any other nominations besides Outstanding Television Movie, which is really odd to say the least because most of the time, television movies, even if they're not featured as prominently as limited series in the other categories, they'll usually have at least a few acting nominations or at least a writing or directing nomination, but, I mean, wow, I imagine several of the actors probably came close to getting a nomination, but maybe just missed out. But anyway, Black Mirror Bandersnatch, that, that Black Mirror episode where you can choose from several different endings. You know, Black Mirror episodes have won this category the last few years in a row, but now things are a little different because now the Emmys have established a new rule where the movie must be at least 75 minutes long to be eligible, because I guess in the past the Black Mirror episodes were shorter than that. Because, you know, Black Mirror, each episode is a completely different story with new actors and everything. It's not like a continuous serialized TV series. Uh, Brexit, of course, is about the Brexit vote in the UK to leave the European Union, which was very controversial to say the least. Uh, Deadwood the movie, of course, you know, kind of meant to be the true finale for Deadwood since, since it was cancelled prematurely, according to many, back in the day. King Lear, of course, it's an adaptation of the famous Shakespeare play, but kind of set more in the modern day rather than in the past. But it's got quite an all-star cast like Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson. And then My Dinner with Hervé stars Peter Dinklage as Hervé Vilches. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But he was an actor who uh, starred on the TV show Fantasy Island alongside Ricardo Montalban. All right, well, and, then, and then, of course, getting on to the drama series, 
uh, Game of Thrones. Um, that's certainly an interesting case because, of course, the last season of Game of Thrones was pretty controversial for both critics and fans. Many felt it was a huge disappointment and a letdown overall, but there were those who liked it and there were many who at least respected the craft quality involved like with makeup visual effects cinematography music and all that i don't think anyone saw this coming the fact that game of thrones managed to get a whopping 32 nominations in total for its last season that's the all-time record for most nominations for a series ever for a single season the previous record, I believe, was NYPD Blue in 1994, which had, like, 26 nominations for its first season. But here, 32, I mean, wow. And almost a third of those nominations are for acting alone. And, you know, you had a lot of returning people like Peter Dinklage, Lena Headey, Nikolai Coaster waldo Maisie Williams. But then you had first-time contenders like Alfie Allen, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, Sophie Turner. And then after not being nominated last year when they sub first submitted as lead actor and actress. Kit Harrington and Amelia Clark finally got in as leads this time, you know, I guess kind of as a way to honor the show as a whole. Um, I didn't really watch the last season of Game of Thrones or really most of the other seasons, so I can't personally say what I think of it, really. I saw like a behind the scenes documentary and I can tell you from what I've seen, man, the, the people behind it especially the craftspeople, they certainly deserve a lot of props for the work they had to do. And Ozark, that certainly has continued to grow with a lot more acting nominations, like you had Jason Bateman return, but then you have Laura Linney, Julia Garner. Uh, Killing Eve also really increased its nomination haul, because last year it was nominated only for Sandra Oh's performance and for writing, but now it's got her, as well as Jodie Comer, Fiona Shaw, and Fiona Shaw, by the way, for you Harry Potter fans, she, of course, played Aunt Petunia in those movies. Sandra Oh, of course, when she was nominated last year, she became the first actress of Asian descent to be nominated for lead actress in a drama series. And if she were to win this year, and many think she will, she'll then become the first winner. So if she does win, you know, congratulations to her for her history-making win. And uh, This Is Us uh, he actually managed to increase its nomination haul by a little bit from last year, mostly acting nominations with like a music nomination and a series nomination. No writing or directing nominations, sadly, because they had some stellar episodes that would have been great nominees, like uh, the Vietnam episode. That was really powerful. But I'm so glad a lot of the cast is still here, like Sterling K. Brown, Milo Ventimiglia, and a lot of great new additions this time, like Chris Sullivan, and especially Mandy Moore. I was so upset when Mandy Moore was snubbed last year, and I was afraid she'd be snubbed again, because, you know, Emmy vo when you get snubbed in your prime, Emmy voters don't often nominate you the fo the, during the next time, but here they did, and, and I'm so glad they did. And, of course, the guest acting categories is always where This Is Us shines a lot, because it's one guest actor two years in a row, first for Gerald McCraney, then for Ron Cephas Jones, who's back again, but then you also have Michael Angarano, who has a very well-deserved nomination for playing Jack's brother, Nicky. It's too bad Griffin Dunn couldn't also be in there for playing the older version of Nicky, but, you know, at least, at least Michael Angarano got in, and I'm glad for that. And, of course, Felicia Rashad playing uh, Beth's mother, you know, Felicia Rashad, she's an icon, and she's amazing in almost anything she does. And believe it or not, she's actually never won an Emmy before. She was nominated twice for playing Claire Huxtable on The Cosby Show, and she was nominated in 2008 for A Raisin in the Sun, but she sadly has never won. And hopefully she'll be the latest overdue legend to win. Although... Speaking of the character Beth, I just don't understand how Susan Kelechi Watson could get left off this year for supporting actress. I mean, this was arguably her best season yet as Beth because she went through so many dramatic and character-changing moments and she played them all magnificently. And many were predicting she would be a nominee and many said she should be a nominee and I completely agree. 
So what gives? Why is she not in here? I just, I just don't understand it. And then, of course, Better Call Saul is back after taking last year off because it didn't air any new episodes in the eligibility period. But, you know, it's back and it still has never won any Emmys ever in any category. I don't know if he'll do that this year because I know both Bob Odenkirk and Jonathan Banks are seen as overdue. Maybe they'll get something. And uh, John Carlo Esposito is back from his role in on, that he originally did on Breaking Bad as Gus Spring. And I know a lot of people thought he should have won in 2012 instead of his co-star Aaron Paul. Maybe he'll get lucky here, but his nomination was still considered a bit of a surprise because people weren't sure if he would actually get in or not. Um, and then, of course, you have Pose, which is Ryan Murphy's latest show on FX, which, you know, details the ballroom culture scene of the 1980s and features a very large, diverse cast, especially with uh, transgender actors and actresses, because this, I believe, has the most amount of transgender performers in a TV show ever, which is definitely a big step up for transgender representation. Uh, surprisingly, it has no writing or directing nominations, which can often be key to winning like the top honors, especially for series and acting, but I've heard such great things about Billy Porter's performance. I haven't had time to watch Pose, unfortunately. Oh, same with all the other shows. I just run out of time and I get busy with other things. But I've heard nothing but magnificent things about him. I hear he's absolutely heartbreaking in several episodes. And uh, if Billy Porter should actually win the Emmy, he'll be one step closer to getting an EGOT. You know, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. He already has a Tony and a Grammy for the Broadway production of Kinky Boots, so if he gets the Emmy, he'll just need the Oscar to complete the EGOT. So hope, so we'll see if he gets there someday. And then How to Get Away with Murder, it's, it only really gets acting nominations, but this year Viola Davis managed to get back into the actress race after getting snubbed last year. And I, I'm a big fan of Viola Davis, so I'm happy for any nomination she gets. And then House of Cards, of course, it came under scrutiny when Kevin Spacey got fired due to a history of inappropriate sexual behavior with teenage boys and also inappropriate behavior towards male crew members on the set of House of Cards. And they decided to have one final season before canceling it. And I know that season got mixed reviews, particularly for its finale. But I guess they decided they felt they needed to at least honor Robin Wright and Michael Kelly for soldiering on in the wake of all this. It's probably not going to win anything, you know, but I guess they just wanted to give it somewhat of a goodbye hug. Um, and then, of course, with some shows, I should explain what how some of them are in certain categories. We have The Handmaid's Tale getting a couple of nominations. However, those nominations are for the last three episodes of its second season, not the third season, which aired earlier this year. And the reason for that is the second season, those three second season episodes fell outside of last year's Emmy eligibility deadline, so they could not be eligible until this year. And because there were only those three episodes, only guest actors and craftspeople could be nominated, then the main cast were not eligible. So, for season three of The Handmaid's Tale, everyone will have to wait until the 2020 Emmys for recognition there. And as for American Horror Story Apocalypse, with its one nomination here for Jessica Lange, normally American Horror Story is always competed as a limited series. However, because this past season of American Horror Story uh, reintroduced old characters from past seasons, it was therefore no longer an anthology series that you know, did something different, at least for this one season. So because of that, it had to submit as a drama series this year. But with its next season, they can go back to limited series because that'll have a whole new cast of characters and a whole new storyline. And then finally, if you're wondering why I never mentioned Stranger Things once in the drama categories, that's because despite 
the third season of Stranger Things dropping on Netflix right before Emmy nominations came out. That new season aired outside of this year's Emmy eligibility deadline, so it's going to have to wait until the 2020 Emmys to compete. And given that the most recent season still received a lot of acclaim from both fans and critics, I'm sure it's going to be a major, major contender, especially now that it doesn't have to compete against Game of Thrones anymore. Well, that's all I really have to say about this year's Emmy nominations. I'm sorry if I couldn't go into greater detail about what I like and don't like, because there's just so much TV these days that it's literally impossible to watch and keep up with everything. But let me know in the comments section below what you think of these nominees, what do you like, what do you not like, and who do you think got snubbed. And also be sure to subscribe to my videos and click on the notification bell so you can get all my new videos as soon as they're uploaded. And I will be back some in the near future with my videos on the Saturn Award winners and the Emmy Award winners. So until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.